have a great show planned for you tonight. This show has some particular significance because we are going to be discussing profiting from wise real estate investment. And we're also joined by a guest who's going to talk about profiting from the right spiritual relationship, that vertical alignment that we all need to make sure uh, that we are living that ab abundant life uh, that Christ said he came to assure and ensure that we all have. So we are excited to have our guests. Um, we are going to get with them in a second, uh, but there are some um, housekeeping matters that we always do on the Matthews broadcast. And so we're going to do like we have done from the beginning, uh, because they say that, you know, consistency is one of the keys to success. So first and foremost, we want to welcome you, our audience, our beloved audience. You are the wisest <clears throat> audience. You're the most supportive audience. And we are grateful for our success. We are grateful for everything that you have shared with us. And we remind you each night that you are a world changer. You were born a world changer. You were born with a divine purposeful plan to change the world, but you have to act in alignment with those gifts that you were born with. And so world changer, nothing changes until you first change it. There is not a miracle that's counted in any of the spiritual books of the world in which God's miracles did not happen through a human being, through a human being. So we need you, world changer. We need you to exercise your gifts, and we need you to make this world uh, that divine community, that blessed community that it is supposed to be, uh, as Jesus said, as above, so below. Uh, secondly, we want to remind you uh, what our poet laureate Maya Angelou always taught us. Uh, that is that we have the obligation to make each other feel as they should feel. We, need, we have the obligation to lift each other's humanity, build each other's humanity. And so it's important how we treat one another. Even in the age of Trump, this is a requirement for healthy living. So as Sister Maya said, people will forget what you said. They might forget what you did, but they will never, ever forget how you made them feel. So help somebody to feel better in everything you say, everything you think, and everything you do. Your candle loses nothing when it lights another. Your candle loses nothing when it lights another. Finally, we need to build on our collective wealth. The Commerce Department and the Labor Department recount this year, the year 2016 that we're all preparing those taxes for, that the African American community in the United States of America had a combined purchasing power of $1.3 trillion. I said trillion, not million, not billion, trillion. And if you look at urban purchasing power, these are all people who live in cities. Uh, that would be our brown sisters and brothers, our red sisters and brothers, our yellow sisters and brothers, city dwellers. City dwellers were a third of America's gross domestic product, which is $19 trillion. City dwellers are $3.4 trillion in purchasing power. And so <clears throat> as, the, as the CEO of United One Bank, which is a black-owned bank uh, in Chicago, says all the time, uh, that if we were a country, we would have $3.4 trillion. And she asked the second question, what would you think of a country who had $3.4 trillion to spend and spent $3.33 on every other country? What would they have left for themselves? And, and she's not being self-serving. I know she's a banker and she has a business to run, but she's asking a simple question and making a simple proposition. You can't give me 99 and a half cents of every dollar you have and then blame me for all your problems. You gave it to me. And so you've got to do something and wisen up your expenditures and use that purchasing power to build your own community. If we had held on to a tenth of it in 2016, we would have $340 billion to rebuild our schools, to rebuild our families, to rebuild our companies so that we can employ more of us. We'd be able to uh, uh, create over 1.4 million jobs 
if we held on to $340 billion. We wouldn't have to ask Trump or anybody else for anything. People would be coming and asking to borrow from us. So we've got to do a better job of organizing our dollars as Stokely Carmichael, famous activist from the 60s who later became known as Kwame Ture, once famously said, the African man and woman is the wealthiest two human beings on the planet. They just don't know it yet. <laughs> and when they find yeah. out, we got a whole different ball game. So we'll leave you with this and we'll get right to our wonderful guest. Money can't solve all of our problems, but money can solve our money problem. And we certainly have a money problem. There's not a lack of money. It's just our wealth is unorganized. So with that said, we want to bring in two awesome guests. We are joined by Reverend Dr. James K. Kuykendall, James A. Kuykendall, of the Agape Church in Patterson, New Jersey. He has been pastoring for more than 30 years. Uh, I'm sure he began pastoring before he officially started pastoring because that's not something you just start. That's something I think you're born with. <laughs> so you were doing it probably 15 years before you got the call. <laughs> and, and he is a great man, a great friend, a great father, and a great strategic partner. There's not anybody, including yours truly, I've been a resident of the Silk City for two and a half years, and when I first got there, uh, we were doing a fundraiser for some kids that were trying to get to the Beijing Olympics, and he had just had an uh, 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 upper respiratory infection. He was home in bed, and I just heard this voice say, Stan, meet me at the church. When you come over there, you're going to have a check for $100 for you. <laughs> and he was, I mean, he was barely standing, but he was going to make sure that wow. he played a role in getting those young people to, to, to Beijing. I remember that. I remember him. Um, that's the type of person he is. You know, he might be challenged and feeling it himself, but he's been a source of support for so many, certainly for our effort uh, in that particular case. And we thank him for that. Uh, he has pastored the Agape Church, which is a multicultural congregation for 30 years. Uh, the church equips its parishioners to establish the kingdom of God in the city of Patterson and surrounding towns and cities. He's a graduate of Eastside High School and has attended Montclair State, now University, Ramapo State, uh, both in New Jersey, and holds a Doctor of Divinity from Shiloh Theological Seminary in Stafford, Virginia. He is also a licensed professional chaplain. Uh, he formerly serves as chief chaplain of the Passaic County Jail and currently serves as chaplain to the Patterson Police Department, praise God, uh, for the past 16 years. He's a veteran of the United States Armed Forces, serving from 1973 to 76, has had a television outreach ministry that covers the greater New York, New Jersey metropolitan area, and has recently extended his TV ministry to Periscope, Facebook, and Twitter. <clears throat> he has been <laughs> married to Reverend Kathy Kuykendall. Praise him on that one. Best decision he ever made in his life. We got to give him two <laughs> for that. <laughs> we got to give him two for that one. The great Kathy Kuykendall for the past 35 years, and they are the parents of one daughter, Tanisha, and they have one grandson, and his name is T Trey. They call him Samuel. Um, the, um, the, the, the resume is long. If I read all of James Kuykendall's achievements, uh, I would run out of an hour on this show very easily. And if I wanted to be argumentative, I could probably be reading this for three more days. So I'm going to just tell you that the brother Dunn did a lot, achieved a lot. He's got a lot more to achieve, and we want to celebrate with him Amen. on this day for 30 years in ministry and to give him a big shout out. He's got a big day coming. Uh, he is celebrating. Um, the event is the 30th anniversary of Agape Christian Ministries. He and First Lady Kathy will be hosting uh, a distinguished star-studded audience of well-wishers and friends at the 30th anniversary Black Tie Gala on Friday, March the 17th 
at 6.30 at p.m. at the Sheraton Persephone Hotel at 199 Smith Road in Persephone in Troy Hills. Um, and we are going to be there to celebrate with them. Uh, we're going to be working very hard to make sure uh, that it be an unforgettable night. We already know it will be successful. That's not even in the cards. We just want to now make sure it's unforgettable. So we want to talk about the legacy. We're not going to talk about the doing. The doing is done. Uh, and I declare that in the kingdom on this night, that the event is already successful. Uh, WLIB's own Liz Black will be there, as will gospel artist Dave James. And for more information, you can call 973-278-4390. I repeat that one more time, 973-278-4390. We also have in studio... Um, not the first time, won't be the last time, my great friend, Mr. Jerry Moultrie. We call him Super Jerry because he just does things that are super. Um, he is the chairman and founder of Urban Business Association, which is an organization dedicated to having dollars circulate in urban communities. Um, when I was attending the briefing of the CEO of United Bank, she was here in town along with the CEO of New Jersey's only black-owned bank, um, uh, Preston Pinkett at City National Bank, and they were doing an overview on why Bank Black. Um, and uh, I was invited, and they were hopeful that we would say good things here, Lindsay, about them. And um, the CEO of uh, United Bank, United One Bank, was saying, Jerry, that uh, the dollar stays in urban communities for six hours. Hmm. <laughs> Yep. She said, you, you get a haircut, you get your, your hair done in the black community, go to a church, and then you leave the black community, you leave the urban community, uh, uh, Reverend Kuykendall, and you spend all of it somewhere else. Six hours. She says the dollar stays in Asian communities for 19 days. So their landlord, the person they pay rent or mortgage to is in their community. The grocery store they buy food from is in their community. The, the place where they get their hair done, get their little whatever, run around and take care of all of their uh, personal requirements, that dollar stays in that community. So Cliffside Park, which is primarily Vietnamese and Korean, 19 days. In the Jewish community, the dollar stays in the community 13 days. I'm, I am surprised that uh, the, <laughs> the Asians yeah. are a little bit more yeah. communal uh, than our Jewish <coughs> brothers and sisters. But in our community, six hours. All of it is gone. We've got to do something about that <clears throat> under any under any scenario you choose. If we held on to 10 percent of one point four trillion dollars, we'd be in better shape. <clears throat> so Urban Business Association has been created to help with that process. Uh, we have members in North, uh, Central and South Jersey. Uh, this a growing organization growing in enthusiasm, growing in influence. Um, and uh, so we have uh, our friend Jerry here this evening, and he's going to talk about something that often comes up in our community, investing in real estate. You cannot wake up early in the morning or go to bed late at night and see somebody talking about, come to my seminar or get my CD or get my DVD so I can teach you how to be a real estate investor. It is obviously an attractive uh, uh, opportunity for many, many people. And so Urban Business Association is going to begin the process next Wednesday night on March the 8th at Roselle Health Plus, Keith Broadway's beautiful uh, uh, establishment in Roselle, New Jersey. Uh, there'll be about 30 to 40 members gathered to talk about a real estate investment opportunity that we will do collectively and <clears throat> Jerry's here to talk about that. So I'm going to come directly to the man of the hour, uh, sitting on 30 years and counting, uh, Reverend Dr. Kuykendall, and I'm going to turn it over to my friend Lindsay Tynes, who has a few questions for you. And Lindsay, you can fire away. Uh, Pastor Kuykendall, what is the name uh, of your organization? The Agape Christian Ministry Church okay. in Patterson, New Jersey. And... What unique value or business organization, I'm sorry, what, what is the unique value of your business or organization? The unique value of it. What, the unique value. What does is, it offer to the community? Well, it, it offers a place that is 
provides culture. We're not just a church, um, but we, we tend to embrace the concept of culture where people who come and who are part of the membership there, that we have a number of things going on in our church that provides a, a forum, provides an environment where they can not only be spiritually trained and equipped for the kingdom of God, but also for fellowship and social media. Okay. Not media, but social relationships. What are some of the ministries that you might want to mention? Well, we have a men's fellowship, okay, and we also have a women's fellowship. We meet every other month with the men as well as with the women, but we also have annual conferences uh, that really address key issues pertaining to men from a scriptural perspective as well as the women. We also have a youth ministry. Mm -hmm. uh, we've had a scholarship fund that we had in and where we've raised thousands of dollars that we contribute to graduating high school um, students. Okay, and what would you like to offer our audience in return for their support for the uh, for the thirtieth for the thirtieth uh, anniversary? Of, I, I see. I have to say this: the 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 flyer has on here the house that prayer built. Yes, and I really, I've exp I've been to your church before, and I've seen this is exactly what it what, what churches need. And uh, but what what would you like to offer? in exchange for them coming to your, your function? Well, we're going to offer that particular night. It's going to be a very festive night where we'll really celebrate and and c commemorate the goodness of God, the faithfulness of God, and mm. how God has empowered us to not just be survivors, but more than conquerors according to Scripture. Mm -hmm. to whereas we've seen many people uh, come and accept Christ. We've seen many people who straight away who veered off, who returned Return. and reestablished a relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. We've seen healings, we've seen deliverances. And so we'll be celebrating. Uh, we have uh, guests that will be coming and will be participating. And also um, after the banquet, we also have a comedy hour. So we have four uh, Christian um, comedians that will come in and will be participating. Uh, I would like to just note that today is it's really interesting that you would have me on this day, mm. March 1st. Actually, March 1st, 30 years ago, 1987, <laughs> we started the ministry oh, at wow. 3 o'clock. Glory to God. Okay. God, and we had 12 people in attendance. Wow. wow. 12 people. And uh, <laughs> since then, um, the Lord has really blessed yeah. us and caused us to prosper. Two years ago, about 2015, mm -hmm. uh, we just Bring it. Bring paid it. off our mortgage. Yeah. We Amen. had a mortgage burning ceremony, mm -hmm. and uh, we had one of the fathers. Uh, he's since transitioned. He came in, and uh, and uh, he was the guest speaker. Mm -hmm. And uh, in my introduction of him, I told him he actually had uh, invited himself about uh, 15 years. He right. just didn't know it. Uh, I remember uh, there was an organization called the Patterson Pastors Workshop. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was young. Uh, I was invited to come in. And I can remember uh, coming the first time. And one of the older pastors, they said, we need young men like you. And uh, I was told, uh, be armed. Okay, <laughs> reserved, being very protective. And I said, why do you need young men? Like, Because we need energy, we need vision. Mm -hmm. and, uh, it reminded me of the scripture where it talks about in Joel 2 and 28, old men shall dream dreams, mm -hmm. young and men young men shall see visions. Mm -hmm. In the text, the two go hand in hand. Mm -hmm. And so it's, it, it talks about generation where old men, they dream dreams, okay, but young men who have vision, they have the energy. To get it but done. the young men need the wisdom of the old, yeah. the wisdom of the father. And it was through that, so I had shared that we had just moved to this new location, mm -hmm. 91 or 76 Ward Street. Mm -hmm. And so after the meeting, uh, one of the pastors came up and they said, uh, uh, Reverend Kuykendall, uh now are you renting or do you own the building? Mm -hmm. And I says, we're renting. Mm. And so he pulled me aside and he said, listen, when you get a mortgage or you pay off your building, then come back and tell us. 
I didn't get insulted. I knew exactly what he was talking about mm -hmm. because so many times, you know, ministries, they lease, they rent, but they never owned. Mm -hmm. It's interesting that we're talking about real estate mm -hmm. here tonight. <laughs> okay. No, it's not interesting. It, 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 providence. Uh, providence. <laughs> Divine Providence. Okay. Providence. I, I agree yeah. with that. And so I knew exactly what he was talking about. At that particular time, I had owned uh, two pieces of real estate. Mm -hmm. And so I did what Mary did. Uh, I pondered in my heart, okay, what he said. And uh, I left there, not knowing that someday in the future, you know, once we reached the point that we'd pay off our building. And what happened was in 2013, I think we were about $100,000 of some chains out. And I was just thinking about when was I going to challenge the congregation to pay off this building? Mm. And I waited and I prayerfully mm. Uh, mm. just allowed the Spirit of God to, to lead me when to announce that. But what the inter interesting thing is, is that when I actually announced what the vision was and where I believe God was leading us mm -hmm. and what he wanted to do, it was like there was a, a spirit of, of, it was a drive in the congregation mm -hmm. to want to accomplish this goal. The people and had we, a mind to work. The people had a mind to work. Mm -hmm. We did that. We accomplished that Amen. in July of 2015. And so uh, mm -hmm. I was trying to uh, decide when could we really have the dedication, and actually we didn't have the dedication until December six of that of that year, mm -hmm. and so uh, I was talking to a couple of colleagues about the the service, and they said you should do that, you should preach it, and I says no, I says there's a person that came to mind, mm -hmm. and I reached out to that pastor, and so when I introduced okay him to the congregation that night. I told him, I said, you actually had invited yourself here years ago. I said, his name was uh, Reverend Dr. Albert Prince Rowe. Mm -hmm. He's the esteemed pastor, oh. he's formerly the esteemed pastor of the historic Calvary Baptist Church here in the city of Patterson. Mm -hmm. And uh, I kind of rehearsed the history of what took place. Mm -hmm. And so when I announced to the congregation, I said, well, Dr. Rowe, I just want you to know. I said, you're here tonight. Mm -hmm. I says, because we don't have a mortgage, but we paid the building off. Mm -hmm. And I said, only because of what mm -hmm. you said, mm -hmm. I just pondered in my heart. And mm -hmm. so the congregation just applauded. I mean, it was just a great event that night. Mm -hmm. And we actually participated. Mm -hmm. He participated in, in the burning of the mortgage. Mm -hmm. And who would have thought three months later mm -hmm. that he would transition? Mm -hmm. And so God did that. It was just like... The mantle was just passed on. Wow. And so right. I say to a lot of young pastors, okay, that as you're led by the Spirit of God and you remain true to your purpose and your call, mm -hmm. all things are possible to them that believe. All things. Amen. Amen. All things. He didn't say small, y'all. said all, all things. Oh, I want to make all sure we get our vocabulary right. Mm -hmm. Thank now, you so much. Did you want to read this? Uh, the contact information... Uh, we know the contact information for the event. Uh, I'm going to read it back one more time. The contact information is, uh, contact number is 973-278-4390. And you can email uh, agape at agape ministries at aol.com. That's A-G-A-P-E. Agape C. C. Yep. Ministries, M-I-N-I-S-T-R-I-E-S. So it's agape C ministries at aol.com and we look forward to celebrating on the 17th uh, with agape with our great friend and uh now i'd like to bring uh jerry into the conversation jerry we know what um uba does we've talked um about what uba does we've participated with our members with our friends our supporters in helping the dollar circulate uh, by providing qualified referrals for each other. This step forward into collective real estate investing, tell us what the spirit behind why you were motivated to decide to have us buy real estate together. What was the motivation behind that? Well, we, you know, first of all, we believe in keeping the money 
in our community, but we also uh, believe that uh, wealth is power. And mm -hmm. in order to create wealth, we got to go deeper than just doing business with each other. We got to dig into it, get involved in the real estate. We got to own, just like the pastor was talking about, own that church. Mm -hmm. We need to own our own churches. We need to own our own businesses in our community. We need to be the landlord in our community. And That's as you, right. you spoke earlier, you know, our money is going out of the community because it's going to the landlords in those communities that you mentioned. Mm -hmm. And again, we're not angry with anybody. We're just mm -hmm. trying to do the right thing. And as you said, you know, we got $1.3 trillion <laughs> worth of purchasing, money, power. purchasing power. We want to use that to, mm -hmm. uh, get, you know, get our community right mm -hmm. and, and pass on generational wealth. Uh, you know, if we just do business with each other, you know, that's not going to solve it. We need to build a, a solid foundation to pass on to our generations as they come. Mm -hmm. And that's what we're, we're focused on. And we started this organization. And obviously, we had to start out and we had a, a vision and we still mm -hmm. have a bigger vision mm -hmm. uh, to do this. And this is just the ne next step in the process. Mm -hmm. And we're uh, venturing off into to the first uh, transaction starting this next Wednesday on the 8th. Mm -hmm. And what we're doing is we're going to allow people to invest as, as little as $1,000. Mm -hmm. uh, we have a property that we've already uh, secured. We have an investor involved in it, uh, Mr. Darren Jennings, who's been doing this for, for 20 years, so he's not a, mm -hmm. a rookie at it, and he has the, the crew to rehab the property. Uh, right now, we're just looking for 30 grand to to pass on, and, and in return for that, people are going to get a 40% return on their money within uh, 90 days. That's a beautiful thing. And we kept the amount small because we want everybody, everybody to, to be able to participate, because mm -hmm. we're trying to bring our community up. And, and hopefully people will keep turning that money over and we can do this on a larger scale and keep getting larger to the, to the point. That, as I say, <clears throat> we really want to own our community. Absolutely. You know, it's often said that success can be easily seen, but rarely experienced uh, and that you can't finish anything successfully unless you get started. That's right. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, talk about finishing <laughs> and you haven't started. Uh, yeah. So um, Jerry covered uh, the, 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 the outline of what UBA is going to do on next Wednesday. So we encourage anyone who is interested in investing in real estate, uh, anyone who is interested in working with a collective effort to build a, a generational wealth in our community to come out to 125 uh, East 2nd Avenue in Roselle, New Jersey to Roselle Health Plus next Wednesday, the 8th at 8.30. Uh, Jerry, could you provide the contact information as we close out this segment? Sure. The, uh, our phone number is 908-259-5012. Mm -hmm. And as Stan said, it's Roselle Health Plus at 125 East 2nd Avenue in Roselle. Uh, my business partner Keith Broadway owns the store and myself of course and our website is www.urbanbusinessassociation.com and you can go on that website and find out more information about our events and things that we're doing on a regular basis mm -hmm. and um, you know we'd love to have more people involved well we look forward to a, a great evening uh, on the 8th uh, this has been anticipated we've had calls come in we've had people email we've had people in small group meetings in North and Central Jersey that want to participate so we're primed for success uh, this is something whose time has come the man sitting next to you has done his real estate investing probably on his own most of the time uh, and so I'm going to make sure he's one of those that are invested and I definitely want to make sure that the two of you connect so that you can mm -hmm. speak independently of this broadcast. We're going to be signing off this evening and I want to thank my co-host, Mr. Lindsay, the voice times, Anthony <laughs> Hibbert of Call Magnet, who's standing in for our image, Dr. Cornelius Hill tonight, Jerry Moultrie, chairman of Urban Business Association, and of course, the one and only, the great pastor, Reverend James Kuykendall, who's taken a little bit of his time. I know his members are waiting for the word back at Agape. And so we're going to be signing off. We salute the generations that brought us to where we are. 
uh, in this, at this place and this time. Uh, they sang the song, We Shall Overcome. Our generation is going to go with DJ Khaled. All we do is win, win, win. Uh, this is the generation of purpose. That was the generation of promise. And so uh, this that generation had that purpose. They brought us to where we are. This generation is the promise keepers. We're going to finish it, and we're going to keep on working until we are where Dr. King said we should be that beloved community. And so we say to you, our audience, our beloved audience, that there are two types of people in the world. There are dreamers like you and dream killers. Embrace the first and run like heck from the second. This is Stan Matthews for Lindsay Tynes. This is the Matthews Empowerment Enrichment Broadcast. Good night and God bless.